So hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about 1 Corinthians 13. And this seems to be a series I've started about famous chapters in the Bible. And this chapter is used in weddings and it's held up as the chapter about human relationships. So I wanted to figure out what's all the fuss about. Why does everybody look to 1 Corinthians 13? I want to understand it. And why should we live like 1 Corinthians 13 espouses? So let's, as normal, learn together about 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. If I speak with the languages of men and of angels, but don't have love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. 13.2. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but don't have love, I am nothing. 13.3. If I give away all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but don't have love, it profits me nothing. 13.4. Love is patient and is kind. Love doesn't envy. Love doesn't brag, is not proud. 13.5. Doesn't behave itself inappropriately, doesn't seek its own way, is not provoked, takes no account of evil. 13.6. Doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. 13.7. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 13.8. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will be done away with. Where there are various languages, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will be done away with. 13.9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. 13.10. But when that which is complete has come, then that which is partial will be done away with. 13.11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I felt as a child. I thought as a child. Now that I've become a man, I have put away childish things. 13.12. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face, for I know in part, but then I will know fully, even as I was also fully known. 13.13. But now faith, hope, and love remain. These three, the greatest of these is love. May God add blessing on the reading of his word. So, very briefly, what did I learn about 1 Corinthians 13? And this starts with all the things we think are important in the Christian life. If we speak with the language of men and of angels. So, how we communicate with each other. I can speak many languages, but I don't have love. So, it doesn't amount to anything. I think that a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And then it goes through all the things we want in the Christian life. The gift of prophecy, to know all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have all faith, you know, and all these great things we think we want in the Christian life. If I give away all to the poor and I, you know, go all the way to become a martyr for the faith. But if I don't have love, it profits me nothing. Very interesting. You know, we always seem to forget love. Then it goes to what love is. And I've really 
learned a lot in being married. Love is patient and is kind. So true in a marriage. You know, a marriage isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. You're going to have difficult days. You know, your partner is going to do things that seem ridiculous to you. But you have to be patient and kind through it all. Love doesn't envy, you know. And I've come to that in my marriage, that I don't envy my wife. I want her to be just as successful as she possibly can be. And I want her to feel the same way about me. <laughs> I don't envy her. And then love doesn't brag, is not proud, you know. It's all about the other person, or at least I have to love the other person as much as I love myself, you know. Doesn't seek its own, right? Very true in a marriage. And I want the best for my wife, not always my own way. Sometimes I just give in and let her have it, let her win the argument. Even if I'm right, it's much more important. Hmm. It's not provoked. So easy to get angry during a marriage. So we try not to provoke one another. We know what buttons to press to get each other angry. And then it goes on to say that takes no account of evil. You know, my partner does evil things sometimes without meaning to. You know, they do something wrong and they know they're wrong or I know I'm wrong. So we don't keep an account of that. I don't list that and hold it against them forever. You know, doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, rejoices with the truth. Very, very true. Bears all things, believes, hopes all things and endures all things. That endure really is true in a marriage. Marriage goes on for year after year after year. We're going to have all kinds of problems and temptations and frustrations and anger and love and joy. You just have to go through it all. And I love this. Love never fails. Hmm. So that's great. But then to go back to or the end to 13, but now faith, hope, and love remain. These three, the greatest of these is love. So we seem to think faith, I need to have more faith in God. Oh, I need to have more hope. That's going to get me through. But no, it's love, right? That's how we're going to see God. That's how we're going to be close to God is through love. So great passage in 1 Corinthians 13. Let's keep learning together. And now for our new modern expression. This is the expression labor of love. And this is something you do for the joy of it, not just for the money or reward. I remember once I went to build a church in uh, South Dakota. And so we're right in the middle of this, you know, almost desert like area building them a church. We didn't get paid for that. We did it for the joy of it. This comes from 1 Thessalonians 1.3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and perseverance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, a labor of love. <laughs> 